Hello and welcome. Well, today happens to be World Health Day. And uh, as you know, if you have health, you have everything. And one thing that really amazes God, a man met God one day and he says, you know, what amazes you about human beings? And he says, I find it hard the way you spend all your youthful life working, 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 saving all these money, amassing all this wealth. And then in your old age, you use all the monies that you gathered to look after your health. Why don't you just look after your health while you're young so you can enjoy when you grow? And so today we're going to look at two silent killers that are creeping into Ghana, our happy home. Because we're becoming wealthier, we are eating much richer, as we say, and we are exercising less. Diabetes and hypertension. Do you know your status if you are hypertensive or if you have diabetes? Should you check? What are the symptoms to look out for? Today, it's purely educational. And even though it's medical, it's all going to be in English. No medical jargons. Don't move. My name is Nana Sakwa, and this is PM Express. When I come back, I'm introducing my very fine guests who are in studio to educate us. Don't move. PM Express is brought to you. Well, thank you very much for staying World Health Day. And please don't tell me you didn't even know that today was World Health Day. At least you should know about it. But once you know about it, what's your health status? And I know men in general, and I must confess, I absolutely detest going to a hospital. I mean, if I'm not sick, why do I need to go there and sit in the queue and get a file and wait only to be told you're well to go home? So I'm very, very bad like that. And I know there are millions of you out there. But then if you ask me, you know, have you checked your diabetes status? Ah, I don't think I'm diabetic. I don't think I'm hypertensive either because I really don't stress myself out. So on those basis, I think I'm safe. But is that the right thing? And I know I'm not the only one who does that. Uh, from my far left, I've been asked to introduce from my very far left. So from my very far left is Mr. John, Dr. John Entry, primary care physician, La General Hospital. Uh, doctor, you're welcome. Thank you. Now to my immediate left is uh, Dr. Vanessa Atipui, who's a medical practitioner at Kolebu. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. I, I should ask him the first question. <laughs> <laughs> you can throw it and then you, you can see, answer. You see that. I just want to find out, with these two diseases, I don't even know if you can call it disease, hypertension and, uh, and diabetes, now, we, we, how true is it that it's on the increase? For diabetes, actually, according to the World Health Organization, which was released, um, for, since 1980, it has increased by about four times. Because in 1980, we had about 180 million people with diabetes. But as of now, we have a whooping amount of 422 million people with diabetes. Yeah, so it is increasing. Is it increasing because we are just, you know, littering the whole place? <laughs> we are, the population is increasing, or is it increasing because we aren't doing something right? Um, I think considering the fact that most people are on the fast lifestyle, everybody wakes up in the morning, they're looking for something fast to eat, so they grab whatever it is that they have. We have an increase in amount of fast food joints, so I think that amounts to the increase in rise of diabetes. And also, people uh, tend to live more sedentary lifestyles. They'd rather sit in their car than take a morning jog. People go to work, they're tired, they come home, they just sleep, eat whatever is available. So I think that also amounts to the number of diabetics we have around. Doc, uh, Dr. Enfi, you know, when we were growing up, there's this thing that, oh, if you eat sugar, you know, you get diabetes. You know, there was all this, <laughs> Uh, area, if, as soon as you eat sugar, you're going to get diabetes. So you have two toughies and it's like, hey, you know, you're going to be diabetic. I mean, w what's the correlation with the sugar and diabetes fear thing? Actually, naturally, what happens is that when we eat, the body has a way of, if the, the sugar levels go up, it has a way of regulating it so that it comes down. So it's not actually taking sugar that will give you diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But it's just the regulation mechanism. When that fails, then it means that the body can no, no longer control the sugar that we take in, and that gives us the diabetes. But, but can, can it fail? But having said that, when you have the condition, then you have to control your sugar intake because then the body is not able to regulate it as it should. 
so you then have to regulate. Yes. But can it fail because you had too much sweets or because you had too much ice cream? That's what I'm saying, that if the regulatory mechanism is good, is in place, then it doesn't matter how much you eat. It will still control it and take care of it. But you realize that at a certain age, with aging and all that, these regulatory mechanisms are not as they are supposed to be. Uh, they weaken, they decrease. So that at that time, you realize that it's not able to take care of it as it should, and then you develop diabetes. So at a certain age, you need to sort of slow it down. Well, slow down us and maybe not taking too much and also burning it when you take it, you know, like regular exercise and all that, like we always advise. Yeah. Exercise always comes up. Of course. You know, exercise always comes up. I mean, you exercise to build your muscles or does it, does it build your <laughs> internal organs as well? I mean, how, how does this exercise play? Hmm. Well, with, when you talk about diabetes, most of the time, one of the risk factors is obesity. And how do you decrease the fat in your body? Mm. By exercising. So if you're there and you're just eating without exercising, burning this fat or whatever it is that you're eating in your system, it continues to stay there and then you tend to develop later in future type 2 diabetes. Yes. Mm, now, we, now that you said type 2, <laughs> how, how, how many types are there? We have type 1 diabetes and we have type 2 diabetes yeah. and we also have gestational diabetes. So break it down for us. What, are, what does type 1 do? I'll let my colleague yeah. do that. Yeah. Okay, basically, what happens is that we are dealing with, we're talking of insulin. I'm sure everybody knows what insulin does. That is what regulates or controls the sugar that we take in. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's no insulin at all in the body. Okay. So the body they can't control the sugar at all. That is what we call type 1. There's so absolutely that's when you have the jabs? Yes. yes. There's absolutely no, no insulin. People are born with that. Okay, and then we have the one that there's, there's not enough insulin. And even when there is, the body cells are resistant to it, so they can't use it. That is when we call it type 2. And then the gestational one, like she said, is usually happens during pregnancy. But after they give birth, it, it reverts results. back to normal. Yeah. So what, d d during pregnancy, the insulin sort of can regulate itself? or During pregnancy, lots of hormones are in place. And with most of the people that usually develop gestational diabetes usually have a positive family history of diabetes. Mm. So they are mostly advised on how to maintain their body, how to eat, what to eat, and regular checks on that. The, the, the other thing is amputation. You know, wh wh why doesn't you know, people with diabetes can heal their sores? Or <laughs> what, what, what's the uh, medical trick on it? It, it has to do with, um, you know, the sugar, mm -hmm. okay? So when you have a sore, for example, when you're diabetic, there's excess sugar, okay? So you have all these microorganisms that, that come around the sore and all that. So the, the, the healing process, okay, it's is slow. delayed. Okay, the healing process is delayed. So you realize that it takes long, a long time. And if it affects, I like, see the legs and the, you know, usually, usually the, the leg, the feet, okay? What happens is that the sores can't heal. So they eat into the, the, the muscles and stuff. And what happens is that you have to amputate and let you save, you know. Because sometimes what we call something like gangrene and all that, it gets so bad, you know, it's going to eat into the whole body and, and the person will eventually die. So to save the person, that's when we amputate the, the you leg. See, now my, my layman question is, now if, if that small sore is not healing and now you amputate, you know, you have a, you have a big sore, how, how is that? No, we don't amputate at a small sore point. You understand? Mm -hmm. Usually what happens is that it goes on for a long time. Okay, this is a long time process mm -hmm. and it affects the limb. You realize that it starts creeping up. So you have to amputate to save, to save the, the leg. That's what happens. Usually they don't come for checkup. Yeah, they don't they even know. They go seek hair. alternative care, they do like herbal treatment and all that. Hair. So it gets to a point you yes. realize that. It's too late yeah. and we have to chop the leg off. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is that that, that small sore couldn't heal because of the sugar and yes. stuff. If you amputate, is, 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 is there still the sugar still there, the, the big sore point? How, how then does that one heal? Mm, okay, that's a good question. Okay, so most of, usually, people are in denial. When you diagnose someone of diabetes, they do not want to accept that it's a lifelong disease. So they ten, tend to go to herbalists to seek other cures who would also tell them that maybe it can be cured or something, but then it's, it's not curable. It's a lifelong thing. Once you're diagnosed of diabetes, you have to be able to live with it, accept that you have it, follow the regimes, follow the medications, 
you have to modify your lifestyle changes and all those things. But most people tend to not accept that. So most of the time, with people with diabetes, we advise them on good hygiene to check in between their toes, because that is how it happens. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, they, because it affects the neurons, that's what we call the diabetic nephropathy, neuropathy, sorry, you are not able to feel the ends of your toes. So even when you have a small cut, you do not notice until it becomes bigger. Yes. Now, you see, you, you're saying it's not curable. I mean, is there no hair medicine that <laughs> makes this body start producing insulin again or repairs this hmm. insulin machine? As in to cure it. To cure diabetes. Yeah. Not no, that I've heard it's of. not curable. But it can be controlled. Yes, diabetes can be controlled. But to cure it, Overhead of a cure. No. There's no, there's no medical fact anywhere that <laughs> says, look, I used to be diabetic, but now I'm no more diabetic. Mm. Well, maybe with a new trends in medicine like we are having these mm. days, they can transplant. Like they're trying to see if they can get you a new mm. pancreas and all that. So maybe when that is more developed, maybe one day we could come out with a cure. But once the pancreas goes, it's gone. No, I'm, I'm saying that like, if we get a new pancreas, like a, a new one, no, for, that for can now. Be <laughs> that there's no, because you, you know, I say this because you, I mean, you tune into all these uh, radio stations yes. and you hear Brian and Isaiah once and for all. We all be a giant. Those are false prophets. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and, and, and they have a following. So I'm sure yeah. viewers at home would want to get that assurance from exactly. you that listen, don't go there. You're better off regulating your diet. Mm -hmm. Now, would the diet vary from person to person, or there should be a you know, one size fits all diet that anybody who has type one or type two should stay within this? Um, I can't really tell, but what we usually advise is you cut down on your carbohydrates, eat more grilled than fried. Mm -hmm. You should have more brown instead of the white. Like instead of having white rice, you opt for brown rice. Okay. Instead of white bread, you opt for brown bread. Have less cereal, sugary cereals. All the white stuff, you should try to cut it down. That's what we mostly advise our patients who are diagnosed with diabetes to do in terms of eating. Fruits? Can you eat fruits? Fruits, yes. And add more vegetables. Yes, as well. and more vegetables, more greens. But fruits, sugary, those are. <laughs> it's, we, we don't advise too, too many at a, at a, at a meal time. Yeah. But a, a small portion will be, yeah. will be fine. Yeah. Sugar cane? <laughs> Sugar, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that's raw sugar. I mean, are you allowed to eat sugar cane if you have diabetes? Um, maybe in tiny, tiny quantities, tiny, I guess. You know, what, what <laughs> happens really. is that sometimes, as human beings, they have cravings, yes. you know, and it's very difficult to deny them of that craving. Mm -hmm. So maybe a little, just to, yes. you know, relieve that sensation in your mouth is okay, but we don't say too much. Yeah. Chilled bottle of beer? <laughs> now you're pushing it. <laughs> I mean, there are people at home. Who, you know, I'm trying to ask questions for everybody. Exactly. But to for answer this question, person. it also has to do with regulation. If you know mm -hmm. uh, your limits, okay, you know your, how your sugar is doing. Okay, sometimes you can just stick your neck out. I had a, a colleague I was working with. She was diabetic. One day went for a funeral, you know, and she she had a uh, jollof rice. And after she felt like eating fufu, <laughs> so she says, okay, she's going to take the fufu. And then when she gets home, she double her dose of you know, medication, <laughs> because she knows that to control the sugar. So these are some of the things, you know, if, if you know how well you're doing, sometimes you can just stick your neck out here and then control it. It's all, yeah. But, uh, I mean, somebody like Kojo Yangsen, who's on our show, morning show, Super Morning Show, has started a sugar project and doing everything to get people to be aware of diabetes yeah. and how to live with I mean, if you see him, and he's probably That's even fine. fitter than I am, you know, <laughs> fine. Uh, so... Is it, is it scary? Should, should somebody who has diabetes be worried because look, this is going to be with me for the rest of my life? Or what, 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 how, how do you treat it? I mean, how do you deal Manage with it? it? First of all, you have to accept that you have it mm -hmm. and find out ways of how to modify your lifestyle to suit your new condition. Acceptance is key. Because you cannot deal with something you have not accepted. Mm. Yes. And so then it will be your diet and your exercises exactly. for the rest and of your, your life. Exactly, and your medications, yes. And your medication. Yes. Yeah. And you would live a normal life. Of yeah. course. It wouldn't shorten your lifespan or anything. <laughs> if it's controlled, why not? If it's controlled, it? it will not. 
How about exercise? You can jog, ride, bicycle, do everything anybody else does? Yes. It's actually more, it's advice for diabetics to even do more of that than the regular person without diabetes. Wow. We're going to move on to a bit of <laughs> hypertension and then come back to diabetes. Today is all my, all the questions that the street people ask is what I'm asking. So you have to, <laughs> you have to forgive me. And like I said, there's no medical, you know, jargons here. Just street things. Now, I, uh, BP here is also on the rise. Is again, is it because doctors? Is it because we are six billion now rather than <laughs> two billion, or is this something that we're not doing which we're supposed to do? As far as BP is concerned, I think a lot of it has to do with stress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stress in our lives now. You know, there are more people competing for fewer resources, and it's, it's <laughs> tough. It's tough, and that is shooting the BP. You know, our BP is high. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break and come back to us. <laughs> we all fall in that category, then, don't we? Yes. Don't move, we're coming straight back. Well, thank you very much, and it's World Health Day, and we're looking at diabetes, and we're looking at hypertension. And uh, let me acknowledge that Kojo Yang Sen is in Kumasi and watching and enjoying the show. <laughs> and we've read your message, Kojo, and uh, <laughs> yep, your diabetes will be <laughs> will cured, cured <laughs> in good time. But send us some statistics to help us in the show. <laughs> but, Doc, this uh, hypertension thing, uh, then it's dangerous. Because, like you say, I mean, we live in a really, really fast-paced mm -hmm. world. I mean, I've been at work since about half past five this mm -hmm. morning, and I'm still here, uh, even though I try not to stress myself. But, so what? Then, then there's no choice. Then we are we're in a fix. All at a risk of hypertension. Yeah. <laughs> and well. particularly you. I mean, there's only, what, 3,000 doctors to look after all, <laughs> you know, 28, 30 million of us. I mean, you are number one risk. So what, what should we do? Just relax and not bother? Well, hmm. It all boils down to lifestyle changes. Hmm. We all have to modify what we do on a daily basis. We all have to cut down on our salty foods. We all have to be ah. physically active. We all have to cut down on tobacco and alcohol intake because those are some risk factors for hypertension. <laughs> and having, having said that, to buttress a point, I also think that we should have a, a fair sense of what to chase for in life, exactly. you understand? Sometimes the kind of things that we, we rush out to do and all that, you realize that in the long term, it has a negative effect on us. So sometimes it's good to weigh things and see whether it's worth going after and all that, you know, so that you know, some of these things are, are minimized. So prioritize? Exactly. Exactly. Your health first. I was listening to a Chinahin's speech one day and he said he went, he was going to the villages and was telling them that, listen, give the children healthy food, choose the children healthy mm -hmm. food and give them, you know, big portions of the meat. <laughs> <coughs> and then after his speech, one old man raised his hand and says, no, no, I agree with everything you said apart from the meat. This is why. He says, I grew up all my life never having meat. The only time in my life that I can buy meat. You're telling me that I should, I give, should. It to, I should give it to the, <laughs> to kids. the kids. I can do that. And isn't it ironic that when now you can afford to buy a beer, you can afford to buy a kebab and buy a salty fish or something <laughs> and eat, and then the doctor comes in along and says, oh, no, you have that's all no good. So but this, this, this salt and hypertension thing, what, I mean, what, what, what is it about salt that is no good for us? I mean, it tastes good. It only comes from the sea. It doesn't get more natural than that. I mean, why, what? I mean, why is it not good for us to have a good Kobe in your egg stew and <laughs> enjoy? It's too much salt. I think it has a, something to do with um, the concentration in the blood, right? Yeah. As in the salt concentration in your blood? Mm -hmm. It kind of raises the pressure. It kind of raises the pressure. That's, that's, that's the point. It so raises the blood pressure. We, Particularly this side of the world, you know, you, I, I, I don't think this side, I think it's the whole world in general. I mean, you, you've grown with salt, even cereals and everything have got, so, so you grow with that addiction where even when you don't eat salt, you don't think you have, you have eating. Is it a case where we should start telling people, look, from infancy, cut oh, salt right. out? Because after you've grown to my age, you want a bit of salt. Well, yes, you can actually advise your kids or start to 
trained them on having a lot a less salt intake in their diet. So when they grow up to your age, they wouldn't <laughs> want to taste the food and be like, mm, there's no salt there's in no this salt food, in it. it doesn't taste good. Yeah, so it is advice too. And one thing which is also advice your children that, from young. Uh, never sprinkle salt on your food, you know. If you it gets it direct. Yeah. What difference does it make, whether I cooked it or I sprinkled it? You mean when it wasn't added to you the know, food yeah, at all? Yeah, you know, you, the food is served and then you take your salt and just shake a bit of salt in the food. Probably might be putting too much than you necessary. Well, but it doesn't taste. <laughs> you know, there's a bit of, but but it, it definitely once you cut down your salt, your BP would be regulated. Is it medically proven, or is just an advice to take away our, our happiness? It's one of the risk factors. So definitely, if yes. if you control it, it would regulate the BP. It would help regulate the BP. Yeah. It's one of the risk factors, right. definitely. And then oil is the next one. As in, your normal cooking oils. Fatty food. Fatty food. Fatty food. Fatty food. Yeah. That also affects your BP. Yeah. White bread? <laughs> yes. It's just the same lifestyle modifications you do for diabetes is basically the same you have to implement when it comes to hypertension. Mm. Yes. Let's come to cost. <laughs> uh, those who have diabetes, I mean, what, what, what would be an average cost if I had, say, type 1 uh, per week? I don't know how... how the prescription would work if you give me a prescription on a weekly or monthly basis. How much money would I need to manage it? With cost, I don't think I can give you a specific figure, mm. but it is quite expensive. But I think if you rather pay and have good health, it'll be better than living with the complications of the disease. Okay, to answer, to buttress her point, mm -hmm. like for example, if you take somebody who is on, only on insulin, okay, mm -hmm. the vial costs about, right now it's about 70 CDs, okay, so if she's doing two vials a month, okay, that would be like 140 CDs a month, because it's just the insulin. So if such a person also has to take, let's say, oral tablets in addition, some of them go like 30 CDs per month, 40 CDs a month. So depending on how many she's on, so we did like 200 CDs, 300 CDs a month. What if she's on leap? I mean, that's <laughs> 48 CDs every two months. So then what happened? So she'll do her ball. She wouldn't come to the hospital at all. <laughs> Is there no NHS business in diabetes medicine? That would have been the, the ultimate if it fully covered, you know, and it's supposed to, but I think we haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, in terms of full coverage and all that. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Uh, are any uh, companies in lo locally manufacturing these things or everything has to be shipped in? Um, I don't really know if of uh, any, any locally, locally manufacturing companies for diabetic medications. I can't. I don't I'm know. not aware of any. Yeah. No? Yeah. Not that I'm I mean, aware of. Vanessa, but, you know, Injecting yourself, I mean, I mean, I can just inject myself. That's a bit too <laughs> wicked. I mean, so, I mean, so, so what do you do? So, somebody like me, what, what, what would you do? Do I have to drink the thing, or you still have to be <laughs> injected? Can't I? Don't I have the option to just break the bowel and drink it. That has been one major challenge that we've been having. Yeah. People's sugars are not well controlled. You advise them they should go on the injections. Like doctor, <laughs> forget. <laughs> and it's it's a big challenge. You know, in our setting, it's a big challenge. But to add on, there are now modified versions of the needles. We have really micro needles, which are very painless. Yeah, so I think with, um, as we go on and improvements in our pharmaceuticals, we tend to develop, listen to people's challenges and then enhance and improve on them. So we are getting there. <laughs> Uh, 0560 zero, 800 000. 0, I'm trying to ask all your questions for you, but if you're home and uh, you want to ask some questions, uh, you know, send, it, send it in so that I can ask it on your behalf. Now, in other countries, when somebody comes to the hospital and they're diagnosed as diabetic, mm -hmm. probably the first two, three weeks, you know, they would have follow-up checks. And like you said, check between the toes to make sure nothing is mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. You know, sort of advice you eat mm -hmm. this, don't need that. I mean, uh, uh, on this side of the world, how, how 
would that be managed? By coming, by sticking to your appointments. If a doctor is to give you a two-week visit, you're supposed to come. You do not skip it and say you're going to seek alternate care. But we, we won't have like the uh, community nurse coming around to check you out? That is also possible and it would be very helpful in educating the public in their in diabetes and then how to control it. I think it would be very helpful if that should come up. How about, how about hypertensive? I mean, I know they also have to go on a tablet. That's if you are diagnosed. So. Uh, is that free or that you have to pay for that too? Healthcare is not free. free Healthcare is not free. Okay, let's let's watch this little <laughs> clip <laughs> on diabetes and then we'll come back. But send your questions in there, zero five six zero eight hundred triple zero. Let's just watch this and the conversation continues. Currently, there is no subsidy on diabetic products. Averagely, diabetic patients spend about two to 350 cities on monthly medication. Current reports indicate that most diabetic patients in rural areas cannot afford treatment, hence the need for government to subsidize. President of the National Diabetes Association says government must make funding and treatment a priority. Government itself must start taking diabetes serious because not much money, not much effort is put into diabetes advocacy. And it becomes very stressful because we are ready to work, but we're not getting the backing of our government. We go to ministry every time there's no money to assist, and then programs fall through. I as to, we, we wish they will fully absorb diabetes into their stream and then because for now, even the syringes for the injections, they see it as a device and they don't cover it. So we would like us to, if possible, to sit down with NHIS to see if we can draw a program or something that could assist them to also absorb diabetes carefully. Alarming figures now show that more young people are becoming diabetic. Country director for the World Health Organization, Dr. Owen Kalua attributed the alarming rates to urbanization, change in lifestyle, irregular exercise, ignorance, and poor eating habits. He said diabetes can be minimized in the sub-region if awareness creation and preventive habits are intensified. Diabetes is a serious and growing global public health problem. And globally, the number of people living with diabetes has increased sharply from 108 million in 1980 to 422 million in 2014. And in the Africa region, this has risen from 4 million to 25 million during the same period. The sharp increase is a result of rapid and controlled urbanization, globalization, and major changes in lifestyle with a resultant increase in the prevalence of the lifestyle risk factors. Meanwhile, Health Minister Lex Segbifia says they are in talks with health facilities and the NHIA to consider subsidizing diabetes drugs for patients. Although we have made progress as a nation in coming up with policies and strategies to tackle diabetes and other chronic diseases in the country, we still need to do more considering the increasing trend of these diseases in Ghana. I wish to use this opportunity to urge the various institutions herein gathered, particularly the National Health Insurance Scheme, to consider, and I hope you are listening, highly subsidized treatment for people suffering from diabetes. The health facility should also institute diabetic clinics and provide free screening services for people who walk into the, their facilities. We will try and incorporate it into their Onyador mobile clinics as well when they go out for their screening. Common warning signs of diabetes include increased thirst, frequent urination in large volumes, increased hunger, unexplained weight loss and fatigue. Well, thank you, uh, 
but let me take a quick break and come back because I have tons and tons and tons of questions mm -hmm. to ask. Uh, I'm going to ask one and then we'll go back and get the answer. It says, are there any side effects or total abstinence of salt? Stay tuned. We're coming straight back. World Health Day. What an important day. It should happen once a month considering how dangerously we are living now. But it happens once a year and we have to acknowledge it. And we're looking at diabetes and we're looking at hypertension, which is literally creeping in very fast and popping us off one after the other. So now I have tons and tons of questions. So I'm going to be asking your questions. Uh, now with diabetes, uh, which, which is more dangerous, low sugar or high sugar? <laughs> I think both are extreme ends and both are dangerous. Both are dangerous, the extreme, both are dangerous. Yeah. Okay. And the total abstinence of salt, does it affect anything? Do we need salt at all? Salt helps in regulating our blood pressures. Oh. That's one of the things it does. So if there were no salt, your blood pressure would drop abnormally. And that would, I mean, have a detrimental effect on the body. And aside of that too, this iodated salt that we, we mm -hmm. take in, it has iodine, which is also important for some glands or organs to function, especially the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. So total abstinence of salt would cause serious health problems. <coughs> okay, so... Well, funny enough, everybody was... All the questions were coming about, please, is it good to avoid salt <laughs> and sugar? To t How about sugar? Can you avoid you sugar? See, the, 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 the most important thing, like they say in life, is moderation. Yes. Mm. If you're doing everything in moderation, you'll be fine. It's just the extremes that people tend to go that create problems. So mm -hmm. everything is good if it's done in moderation. Now... Vanessa, you diagnose somebody with diabetes and as you're saying that maybe the person may be too poor or too much of a hectic life. Uh, he's a cassava farmer. <laughs> I mean, so obviously his main food is going to be fufu. I mean, so what, what do you tell such a person? Hmm, that's a tough one. <laughs> Eat small lumps well, of the fufu? No, you can tell him from his sales he can be able to afford to buy some vegetables which he can add to his meals. We're not saying cut down on, don't eat fufu at all. Mm. You can have fufu, but like my colleague said, have it in moderation. It's very important. Uh, this one says, what's the difference between diabetes mellitus, type one and two? <laughs> well, type we mentioned one, that earlier. Yes. We mentioned that earlier. Yeah. So that's been mentioned earlier. Yes. So type one is when you need your insulin. Exactly. Yeah, the that's body can't produce congenital. insulin at all. It doesn't produce insulin at all. That's type one. Yes. Okay. And in type two, it doesn't produce it's enough. Required or the cells are not sensitive to what it produces. Okay, this one says, uh, is it true that when you have sugary urine, you have diabetes? Yeah. Um, I'd say not in every case, yeah. not in every case, but it's one of the symptoms that we usually use to diagnose diabetes. Uh, this one says, good evening, Nana, and to your panel. Uh, when you eat too much salt, which contains sodium, your body holds extra water. This may cause blood pressure to rise. The added water puts stress on your heart and blood vessels. Mm -hmm. to, to the fat, excessive fat and sedentary lifestyle mm -hmm. contributes to formation of uh, plagues mm -hmm. in the blood vessels exactly. known to be... As through atherosclerosis, okay, <laughs> which the flow of blood um, is restricted. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, it's stopped. It's, yeah, it's only English. <laughs> I'm sure it's only English helped. on the show. But so, can can you can lifestyle prevent these things or some things? Some of them are hereditary. So whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. With with type one diabetes, it's more of a hereditary thing. So you're sort of born with it. But lifestyle changes can indeed help prevent type 2 diabetes, which is acquired. Now, this, uh, th there was an argument. Somebody sent a message and said, oh, I don't believe doctors because uh, <laughs> uh, diabetes could be, to, to, could be reversible. So that, that doesn't mean that it's, it's, it's cured? Or what, what's the difference if you say you've reversed it? It's controlled. I'm sure that's what the person means. Diabetes cannot be cured. Well, not to my knowledge. I know it can be controlled, not cured. And to buttress a point, what I'd like to say to the person is that if you say something is cured, then it means that if you stop taking uh, the exactly. medication or stop the intervention, it shouldn't come back, mm -hmm. okay? But in this case, whatever intervention you are doing to reverse it, if you stop doing it, it's going to come back. 
So ah. then you can't say it's cured. It's cured, yes. So it's controlled. It's yes, controlled, yes. Yeah. Okay, it's controlled. <laughs> there were a couple of messages with regards to uh, uh, what I was saying that you know they hear on on the radio all the time that you know come for this concussion and that's it you're sorted. So medically you're advising them that d it don't is do not that. Yes. Don't do that. But are there any herbs that control this insulin thing? I mean, uh, I have known people who know. have stopped taking uh, medication and gone for herbal, believing that that was going to help them. Mm -hmm. And they've always come back, back with, with very worse high sugars. Complications. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, to my knowledge, well, I'm not challenging the herbal practitioners. <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't do that on this forum. Mm -hmm. But, well, to my knowledge, I think what we have as you know, like Western medicine, uh, the, the drugs and stuff we have are better at controlling diabetes, to my knowledge. Now, Terry John has sent this twice. Nana, please highlight the main foods that trigger diabetes. <laughs> Nana, please highlight the main foods that trigger diabetes. So, the, the, uh, from your explanation, there isn't a food that trigger diabetes. It worsens it. Like I mentioned earlier on, you should cut down on your whites. White rice, white bread, and switch to more of the browns, brown All the sugar. All in life. Yes, <laughs> unfortunately. But, but does it, does it, would it trigger diabetes? Yes, type 2 diabetes. Like I said, type 2 diabetes is acquired more ah. from lifestyle. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. If, if you exercise a lot and you eat these things, would it still balance itself out or...? <laughs> play tennis in the morning, jog in the afternoon, ride a bicycle in the afternoon. Can you, can you eat your whites and your stuff? Will it, will it balance itself out or still you have to cut down? It's still well, you still need to do everything in moderation. That's, yes. that's what I feel. Because you never know when you're going to tip the balance, mm -hmm. you know, the other way. I see. <laughs> now, uh, blood pressure. Which, which, is, which, is, which is worse, the high or the low? They're both worse. They're the extremes. You can't, you just should be. Well, one should be more dangerous more. than the other. I mean, one should be when you're rushed in the hospital, the doctor's more likely to save you if it was high than <laughs> if it was low, or, you know, more likely to save you if it was low than if it was so high. The two are all medical emergencies. Yes. You know, you Hypotension yeah. and hypertension. <laughs> so when you say somebody's hypertensive, does it mean automatically mean the blood has gone up? I mean, the pressure has gone up, or does it mean it could go down to, I mean, Hyper means it's gone up. Yes. Hypo, hypo means it's gone down. It's gone hyper down. is too gone low. Up. Yeah. Yes. Hypo, hypo is low. Yeah. And what, what do we have in Ghana? The up one or the down one? Hyper. Up. Must be up. <laughs> With all this doom so and stuff, it, 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 it's, not, it's, not go, it's not going to go low. It's too not going to go low. <laughs> right. So w w what would make your blood pressure go low? Uh, for the few patients I've seen with low blood pressures, it's mostly been something they were born with, naturally. That's mm. how their blood pressures are. And I think for some too, it's to do with the salt thing that we are talking of. They don't take enough salt in their diet. That can contribute to a low blood pressure. Really? Yeah. Well, you see, the, the, uh, there's this, you know, well, you know my, street, my street doctor. <laughs> that at least if it goes high, you get this uh, headache signals, but when it goes low, you just drop dead. You know, you, you, it doesn't give you any alarm, uh, you know, no, no alarm bells. I mean, is, is it true that, I mean, at least if it goes high, you feel, you get some ooziness and then think, oh, when it's well, something, there's something wrong here. <laughs> when it's going low, you start to feel dizzy and you start to shake. Then you know that, uh oh, there's something going on here. Most of the time. So that, that Low and easy, yes. I, I see. <laughs> now, for, for a very, very long time, right, I mean, I had very low blood pressure. Okay. Extremely low, you know, for a long time. And, well, I never felt dizzy. I was swimming, I was riding my bike, but it, it never went up. I mean, I was sometimes like 80 over 60 yes. or, I mean, it was just unusually low until my old age and <laughs> Dunsov came. And now then you stopped exercising, you stopped swimming, you cut down on all those. Then, then sort of Active came. exercises can actually cause your blood pressure to go low. Most but athletes actually have a blood pressure of between 160 or even lower because they are very active. So, so that, that was not like any alarm bells that I should <laughs> No. Because, I mean, it was unusually low. Oh, I see. 
Okay, I guess I need to I need to get back on the exercise. Mm -hmm. But so uh, I, I, the this stress thing, and since we can't get away from stress, and I know doctors saying we should prioritize, but sometimes you know <laughs> you, from your list from one to ten, one is school fees, two <laughs> is the wife, you know, three is the the landlord, you know, four well, is the one, house. One, one, one thing I like to say is that you know. We worry so much about these things sometimes. One thing you have to know is that if you're not there, these things still go on. Life still goes on. You understand? So sometimes you have to look at it from a certain perspective and take it easy. Mm -hmm. If you're not there, the, the, the work goes on. Still People still lead yes. their lives. Your family, they'll still lead their lives, you know? So you don't have to just kill yourself you know, for some <laughs> of these much. things. Is, is hypertension and hypotension, are they, are they curable? <laughs> hypertension, no. Just like diabetes, hypertension is not curable. It's controlled, yes. But How about the, the low one, the hypo? Hypertension, my colleagues. <laughs> you know, that one, like, like you were saying, your case, for example, mm -hmm. is something that you were used to, you were living with it. So wouldn't say that is like a medical condition. Your system is used to it, and you're okay with it, okay? Yeah. But if, for example, it drops, okay, then that is a, that is a problem, because then it's, the system is not used to it, and it's a medical emergency. But it could be your normal pressure that you were born with and you were living with it. So that one wouldn't be a problem. Could, could uh, uh, you know, like different people have different pressures? Like, you know, maybe those in the north have a different pressure than those in the west. Or yeah. yes. And, and, and they, they, they should be, there shouldn't be a one size fit all kind of pressure? We usually talk of a range. Mm -hmm. That's what we talk of, a range that is deemed normal. And below that range is low and above that range is high. So it's usually a ring, not maybe just one for everybody, exactly. but it's a range that we deal with. Are, are, are there people who live with abnormal high pressure? Like I was living with abnormal low pressure and was fine. <laughs> are there people who live with high pressure and look, they're okay with it? Well, like they say, it's a silent killer. Sometimes it's high, but you don't realize yeah. it. You can until you walk in, late. you know, until it's too late. So there will always be the day that yeah. it will and catch up with your you. Body yeah. gives in. How, how, so how, how often would one have to check the blood sugar. Mm, how often? Well, I'd say if you have a positive family history of diabetes, it's advisable to at least check it every now and then, maybe once a month. And you also have to look out for the signs which may predispose you to having diabetes, like the increased thirst, increase in urination, increased hunger, all those things are warning signs. Check your blood sugar. Increased thirst. Yes. Frequent urination. Yes. Increased hunger, and then profuse sweating. Yeah, and sometimes yes. you're eating well, but you are losing weight. Yes, weight loss. And for some of the women, too, they start itching around the vagina. They get this what we call eau de poire, you know, this whitish mm -hmm. constantly, you know. And then when you get a sore or a cut, it doesn't heal quickly. Yes. You know, these are some of the signs that show that. So then you need to go get checked. Yes. What, what, what's the safe range of your sugar? I know they do like between you know, four and six. Or yes, yeah. exactly. If your fasting blood sugar is above seven on two consecutive occasions, I'm not too sure of the figures, yes, and your random sugar, your fasting is after you haven't eaten, probably before 10 a.m., is above seven, and your random, which is after you've had a meal, is above 11, then it's a warning sign. You have to get it checked. Yes, again, to We're confirm. We're going to take a break. <laughs> We're coming straight back. 0560-800-000. Send your questions in. Well, thank you very much for staying. And we are all in the consulting room. Everybody's checking. <laughs> Uh, the uh, BP status and the uh, sugar status before the show ends. This one says, are there people who are fine but get pregnant and get hypertension? Uh, for some of the women, it, uh, it goes after delivery and some don't go. And what, what's the, some, some get pregnant and then you become hypertensive forever? <laughs> Well, we have what we call pregnancy-induced hypertension. Mm -hmm. That's you, most women or some women develop hypertension during the course of their pregnancy. 
And most of the time, that type of hypertension resolves. For those who still have hypertension after their pregnancy, have a positive family history of hypertension. Ah, I was going to ask yes. that, that. We talked about diabetes being sometimes genetic. Mm -hmm. With hypertensive too, it could be genetic. Yes. Hmm. Uh, am I to understand that stress is the leading cause of hypertension from their submission? I want to know why hypertension is very common in the old age, or is it a disease of the aged? This is from Prosper Aculia. I think what happens is that naturally, as we age, the, the elasticity of the blood vessels, you know, it reduces, so it increases the pressure naturally with age. So that is why with age, people develop, you know, hypertension, even though they might not have a genetic Naturally, this, the walls get less elastic as we age, and the pressure increases in them naturally. But there's, there's an acceptable rise with age which you wouldn't bother about. I mean, you won't get 120, 80 all throughout. So <laughs> as you turn, let's say, 70, you know, you're not supposed to be 180, 120, <laughs> 80 anymore. Or yeah, that's what I said. We have a range. Yes. That is deemed normal. And anything above the range is high or hypertensive. And anything below is low. So it's a range that we deal with. So if you move beyond the range, then you have developed hypertension. No, so let's say, let's say if somebody's 30 mm -hmm. and they are 120, 80, you'd say, mm -hmm. you know, walk out of my hair, you're, yeah, fine. you're fine. But it depends. OK. Yes. For someone, even though we have a range, like you, you said when you were younger, your normal walking blood pressure was 80. Was 60. Exactly. Yeah. So if someone should come in with a blood pressure of 130 on 70, even though someone for another person, that is normal. For you, that is hypertension. Because you have increased from your normal blood pressure range. Ah. Yes. I see. If, if somebody says 70 years old, mm -hmm. you know, are they expected to still be 120, 80, or they could be a <laughs> bit 140, 90? Lifestyle modifications. Lifestyle. It's very important on how you live your life. Because even though age is a risk factor for hypertension, lifestyle is also a, a huge risk factor for it. You can't be smoking all through your life. You can't be drinking alcohol all through your life, eating fatty foods all through your life and expect that when you're 70, you'd have a normal blood pressure. It's not, I don't know. I don't think that is. Well, this is a congratulations, Dr. Tipwig. Your daddy is watching you. What? <laughs> 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 well, Daddy Atupi, uh, thanks for tuning in. But uh, yeah, your daughter is educating us all as to what to do. Now, with this lifestyle thing, uh, I mean, you are doctors. So what, what do you advise that we do as, as, as a people, <laughs> you know, so that it becomes a, a culture? Exactly. So that we don't come and bug you too much. What exercise every morning, yes. every school should do some exercise. The little, yes, every little bit counts. If it's a 30-minute walk every morning, if you can't do 30 minutes every morning because maybe you're rushing to work, you can do 15 minutes in the morning, and then maybe after work you can do another 15. That should be... 30 no. minutes a day? Yes, at least. Even on Sunday? <laughs> Sunday is even when you should do it walk, more because you don't have work. Walk to church on Sunday. Walk to church. Wow. So, I mean, generally exercises will reduce by how much though? Because it keeps coming up by coming up. Uh, you know, those who exercise would reduce their risk by... As far as I know, I know diabetes has, exercise has a 40% risk reduction. Whoa. Yeah, yes. type 2 diabetes. Now that's a lot. Yeah. It is. That's a lot. And hypertensive? I, I'm not, I'm I'm not, not sure. sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. I won't be surprised if it's somewhere hovering, <laughs> hovering <laughs> some, the 30s somewhere and 40s. There. But now <laughs> P, you know, P has been taken away from schools because they have too much curriculum and everything. I mean, could that all be reason why we are queuing up at your consultancy, you know. PE is very important. I remember when I was in school, we would, every morning, <laughs> we would have PE go around the school. But it's actually very helpful. And should be brought back. Yes, definitely. 
And to buttress a point too, you realize that a lot more of the kids are now developing obesity. Yes, obesity. Mm -hmm. So at least if this PE was instituted, mm -hmm. they could be burning this fat, you know, whilst they were young and not grow up, you know, suddenly diabetic and all that. So it will help. Ah, before I let you go, I hear, you know, the fat around the waist is not the best of <laughs> the best of fat. I mean, is it just picking on us or is it a fact? Abdominal obesity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not good. Not at all. Never even chiefs, you to be friends with us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why, why is the one who got, I mean, why, if, I mean, if it's on the thigh or the buttocks, I mean, why is oh, that one particularly a bit dodgy? I think, I'm not sure, mm. that that fat is Too more cool. difficult to burn. That's what I think. Too close for too close to the organs, <laughs> uh, too close to the organs. But I mean, uh, I mean, general advice to people, and I start with uh, doctor. Uh, I know exercises keep coming up, but for those of us, so, you know, who have a heavy schedule, you know, from five thirty to ten p.m. I mean, so what do we do? I mean, um, take for example you work in an office that's on the third floor. Mm. Instead of using the elevator, why not try the stairs? Mm. Okay. Instead of ordering for your food to be brought into your office, why don't you walk to the canteen and get it? Little bits, like I said, helps. Uh, somebody, I know it's been said over how much fruit <laughs> should uh, diabetic eat. Am I, they, 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 everybody in the studio there wants their question answered. How much a fruit fruits? should somebody who's diabetes eat? I mean, how much is allowed? One mango, one pan, you know, two mangoes. Well, I think you, you, you need to cut down. You can't eat like a normal person would eat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe if it's a That's banana, okay. maybe one. If it's an orange, maybe one. That kind of thing at uh, the seven. You know, so you can't eat like the normal person eats. So you have to cut it down. Because of the sugary, yeah. Plants for vegetables, you can go all out. <laughs> I believe you can. Are, are there any? Can you, is there anything sugary. such as too much vegetables? Too much of everything is it's bad. bad. <laughs> oh, even yes. vegetables, lettuce. Yes. <laughs> oh, doctor, <C. laughs> Oh, it's true. It's a, it's a general rule in life, you know. Yes, too much, too of, much of everything is bad. Really? Yes. So too much greens will be, you know, spot on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm thinking too much greens will be will be spot on. So g general advice before we go, I mean, what should we do? Well, as a people, I think that we need to increase our awareness, our health mm -hmm. awareness, okay? And it should start from the schools, yes. the churches, and the mosques, everywhere. We need to educate our people to take up, you know, exercise as a regular routine in life, you know? And our diet as well, all these trophies and fast <laughs> foods and fried rice oily that we are buying, foods. all these oily foods are not healthy. Yes. And then also to go for regular medical checkup, mm -hmm. that is also mm. important. We have some of these are market women, yes. they sit at one place selling, mm -hmm. eating, 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 exactly. the next minute, BBM, BBM, you know, they rush them, the BPs are <laughs> way high, they develop strokes and all yes. that. So well, a regular medical checkup is Education. very important. What, when you say regular, what, once a year, twice a year? Even if you can make it to a clinic nearby once a month, say, let me check my BP, let me check my blood sugar. Let at least have an idea of what your standing blood pressure is so that if it should go up a little, you would know that, mm, do I need to get this checked? Let me go have a look at it and know exactly what is happening. Yes. So once a month, at least, is advised. Well, next week, I'll definitely check you out. I'll go and check everything. I'm going to, I'm going to do all Why not today? <laughs> uh, next week, I'll go and do all the checks that I need to do. Yes. And uh, But I feel fine, though. But hmm. well, that's a why it's a silent killer. killer. Yes. <laughs> silent killer see. We'll be killing you silently. <laughs> I, 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 I promise to go and give myself illness. a good thorough check. But I think. Uh, I don't know if I answered all your questions, but I'm sure I answered quite a bit of your questions at home. But being that uh, today is a World Health Day, <laughs> let's look at it. And those of you who are like me, you know, pay attention to your health, walk into a clinic, check your sugar, check your BP and whatever else that you need to check. But doctor and doctor, thank you so much. I must say they were called in the very, very last minute. <laughs> so we get so grateful that they stop whatever it is they're doing to honor our invitation. We are grateful. 
But as I always say, tomorrow we'll be back to do this all over again. Thanks for watching and thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having us. <laughs> and thank you to Nadia to pay for watching. <laughs> <laughs>